Welcome to part two of combinatorics. Last time we talked about permutations, selecting things or arranging things when the order matters. We talked about selecting the numbers for a locker combination and how if you have the code 13, 12, 75, well, they have to go in in that exact order. You can't put in 75, 13, 12 and expect the lock to open. Today we're going to take a look at another possibility. Sometimes the order which things are selected does not make a difference. Suppose you're playing a, a lottery game and the numbers you pick are 5, 10, 25. And I reach into the big container and I pull out the, the numbers. And I pull out 25 and I pull out the numbers, all three of them. Well, it doesn't matter what order they came out in. As long as your three numbers match, you've won. Another example, suppose I'm going to the amusement park. I'm going off to Seabreeze for a trip. I have a club of 10 people and I'm going to choose three of them to ride with me to Seabreeze. Well, take a look at this. Suppose I decide I'm going to take Mike, Sue, and Jim. Off we go to the amusement park. That's not any different than if I said, you know, we're going to Seabreeze, I'm going to take Jim, Mike, and Sue. Or if I said we're going to Seabreeze, we're going to take Sue, Jim, and Mike. Any order that I selected those three people would give us the same result. Those are the three who would be going to Seabreeze with me. And so in this case, the order doesn't matter. When the order does not matter, we call that a combination. A combination is when the order makes no difference. It's completely irrelevant to what happens. Now, let's take a look at this situation in terms of mathematics. We have 10 people in our club, and we're going to choose three to go to Seabreeze. We call that a combination. And we have notation just like we did before. Instead of NPR, we have NCR, C for combination. N is how many I can choose from. In this case, there's 10 people in the club. R is how many I'm going to pick. So I'm going to pick three people to go with me to Seabreeze. And so here I have 10 C3, 10 people in the club to pick from. I'm going to choose three of them, so 10 C3. And I can plug that into my calculator. I'll show you in a moment how to do that to find out how many different groupings of three people I could pick. Now, when I put that in, I find there's 120 different groupings of three people. It's worth noting that there's a different notation that some mathematicians prefer to use. Some folks will put the N and the R in parentheses with the N on top and the R on the bottom. So here we have 10, choose three. This is a combination, 10 to pick from, three that I'm going to choose. Now, let's take a moment, take a look at the calculator, see how we can go ahead and, count and calculate these. We can use the TI-84 and the TI-INSPIRE to calculate the number of combinations. With the TI-INSPIRE, begin by starting a new document and inserting a calculator page. Once you've done that, simply go to the menu and you'll see an option that says probability. We have factorial, permutations, combinations. This time we want combinations. And you'll see NCR will appear on the screen. To perform the computation, simply type in the N value, the total number you have to choose from, let's say 20, and then a comma, and then the R, let's say 3, 20C3. So we have a total of 20, we want to choose 3. When we hit enter, we get the number of combinations, 1,140. To perform another computation, simply repeat those steps, going to menu, probability, and then combination. In the case of our example, going to the amusement park, we had 10 in our group. We wanted to choose 3, so 10 choose 3, 120. We can also use the TI-84 to calculate the number of combinations. Everything you want is in the math menu. So if you press the math button, which is located below the alpha key, and you arrow over to the right-hand side where it says probability, you'll see there's all kinds of options. The second one says NPR for the permutation. The third one says NCR for the combination. And so NCR gives us our combination. Now, when we put this in, it's important to put the first number in before you do that. So in the case of our going to the amusement park, we had 10 people in the club. I'll go math over to probability. 
NCR, and then I want it to select 3. And you'll see that I get 120. If I had 20 and I wanted to choose 3, 20, math, over to probability, and I want NCR for combination, and let's say I have 20 choose 3, there's 1,140 ways to choose that. And so that's how you can use the TI-84 and the TI-INSPIRE in order to calculate the number of combinations. Now let's take a quick look at a few of the examples in the first section of the notes. Example 1, part A, B, and C. Here are the solutions to the first ones. The value of 10C3 is 120. The value of 8C4 is 70. And the value of the last one, it's 12, 9, that's 12 C9, that's 220. Okay, here's an example for us to work with. Mrs. Fitzsimmons has a class with 10 boys and 20 girls, and she wants to choose a team of three to perform a community service task for her. And we want to know how many different groupings she could choose. Now the question is, does the order I choose these people matter? Well, let's think for a second. If I choose Peter, Paul, and Mary, that's the same group if I choose Mary, Peter, and Paul. So it doesn't make a difference which order I choose them. That must be a combination. And so how many different teams can she create? Well, if she wants any three students, there's 30 all together, she's going to pick three of them. 30 C3, because the order doesn't matter, 30 choose three comes to 4,060 different groups that she could put together. Now, suppose she said, well, you know, I really want there to be one boy on this team and two girls. Well, that's okay. She's going to choose one boy, so she has 10 boys to choose from. She's going to choose one, that's 10 C1, and, and means multiply, 20 girls to choose from, she's going to choose two, 20 C2, 10 C1 times 20 C2 gives me 1,900. There's 1,900 different teams she could assemble that have one boy and two girls. If she decided she wanted three girls on the team, well, there's 20 girls, she wants three of them. 20 C3, again, the order doesn't matter. So we put that in, we get 1,140 different teams of three girls. Finally, let's suppose she's a little pickier. She says, well, I want a team that has at least two girls. At least two girls. That means two girls or more. So two girls or three girls. Well, if she has a team of two girls, that means she has one boy and two girls. All right, the boys, 10 C1. The girl, 20 C2. Or, this is addition, three girls, 20 C3. I plug that into the calculator, I find out there's 3,040 different teams that she can assemble that have at least two girls. So you notice that really what this is, here's the one boy and two girls, that's this amount up here. Three girls, that's this amount here, and it's just those really added together. Final example here, um, we have a team that we're trying to assemble, a committee that we want to assemble out of 10 math teachers. So we have 10 to choose from, and we want to assemble a committee of four. Now, it's been decided by Mrs. Konar that Mr. Dory must be on the team for his expertise and his good looks, and Mrs. McCann must also be on the team. So the first slot has to go to Mr. Dory. There's only one Mr. Dory, and so we'll just put a one there, only one person to choose from. The next slot has to go to Mrs. McCann, and so there's only one Mrs. McCann, so that slot has to go to her. I'll put a one there. Now, there's two remaining slots and eight other teachers to choose from. The order I choose the last two teachers doesn't really make a difference, and so it's a combination. There's eight teachers left. I'm going to choose two, 8C2. I plug that into my calculator, 1 times 1 times 8C2. I find out there's actually 28 different committees, 28 different groupings of teachers that I could come up with to form these committees. Now there's several examples in the notes packet and I'd like for you to take a few moments here to pause the video and give those a try and then we'll go over the solutions. In example number two it says there are six points in a plane, no three of them are collinear. 
remember that collinear points mean that they're in a straight line. So there are only two points anywhere that form a straight line. How many straight lines can be drawn using pairs of these points? Well, a line requires two points in order to be drawn, and there are six points altogether. So we have to choose two of the six. So 6C2 gives me 15. There's 15 possible lines that I can draw. Example number four says that there are 14 teachers in a math club. How many ways can a four-person committee be formed by the members of the club? Well, it doesn't matter what order I choose people in for the club to join the committee, and so it's a combination. 14 altogether, I'm going to choose four. 14 C4 is 1,001. Part B says, how many ways can a four-person committee be formed if Mr. Duntley, who is one of the 14, must be on the committee? Well, there's four slots. The first one must go to Mr. Duntley. There's three remaining slots and 13 people left to choose from. 13 C3 is for the remaining three slots. So one times 13 C3 is 286. Finally, how many four-person committees can be formed if Mr. Dory and Mr. Serbone, who are two of those members, must be on the committee? Well, we have Mr. Dory in the first slot. There's only one of him. Mr. Serbone in the second slot. There's only one of him. And we're going to choose two people for the last two slots. There's 12 to choose from. And so we have 12 C2. 1 times 1 times 12 C2 is 66. And there we have it. Now you're an expert at combinations and permutations. You know all about them. The important thing to ask yourself is, does the order which the things are selected matter? If it matters, it's a permutation. If it does not matter, it's a combination. And for now, we thank you for joining us. Have a wonderful day.